All right, welcome everybody to another LinkedIn Live here at Capital Technology University. Today we have Daryl Gibson. He is the Associated General Contractors Director for their Education Research Foundation. He's going to talk a little bit more about that. We also have Craig Capano, who is the Associate Dean for Capital Technology University, and um, and he has a construction background. So let's uh, let me turn it over to Daryl to talk a little bit about AGC and also especially about the Education Foundation for Construction and Education. Sure. Thank you, Dr. Sims and uh, Craig. Thank you for the invitation. Um, Yes, as I come on and, and share news about what we do over at AGC and the AGC Education and Research Foundation, I sit as the executive director for the foundation. And we represent um, an entity that's about uh, just over 50, well, well over 50 years old now. And it was set up by members of AGC back then to be a resource to the industry. And so as a result of that, uh, we have uh, some some charges, some charges that we're responsible for, for supporting industry from workforce development to research and vocational activities that we do on an annual basis. And uh, the the largest part of what we probably are recognized for is our scholarship program. And Dr. Bradford just shared that he was a recipient of that some years back. And so we're proud of that. Uh, so our scholarship program covers the. Uh, a multitude of, of, of opportunities for students, both grad and undergrad. And then we also provide scholarships for those craft professionals. Mm -hmm. So on an annual basis, we will award uh, uh, well over a half million dollars in scholarship support to undergrad, grad, and, and craft professionals across the country. And then we also have some research programs that we're responsible for here. We call our case studies programs where we put RFPs on the street and ask um, faculty and industry to combine to help us address some particular needs that might be uh, prevalent in the industry and help us put, put together papers that we then uh, will provide for industry and those academicians for use in classrooms. And with those academicians, we also provide teacher notes. Um, our industry residency program is a really unique program that we provide, and it's a compilation of three parts where we have a faculty member, we have an AGC member, and then we have a uh, institution of higher education. And those three will come together to support that faculty member who will go on site with the uh, AGC member company over the summer. So we have about five or six of those industry residencies out, industry, industry residents out there now. And over the last uh, 10 plus years, we have uh, funded about 50 of those industry residencies. So at the end of their uh, activities in any, any any given summer, they're responsible for developing a report out. And so we share that as well. Um, so we have a 20 member board of directors that helps us in our daily work. And those board members are AGC members across the country and also infused in our board are a couple faculty members that help us stay abreast of what's taking place on the other side of the ledger when it comes to preparing these students for their interest into the um, construction industry. Um, Brad, if I can pause and take questions or anything from you or Craig now that might be helpful, or if I can give you any additional highlights. Yes, yeah, so so Daryl, I'll I'll start off. Uh, you know, obviously, I'm I'm well aware of the foundation. I've, I've been involved with it for a number of years. Uh, helped with start some of the initiatives. Uh, the uh, Bob Bowen industry residency that you talked about, which has been very successful to get faculty, you know, out and, and learning the new skills uh, that they can then bring back into the classroom. Uh, I, I think the, the foundation has done some great things. Uh, I think your mission of, of trying to make us a better industry by mm -hmm. focusing, I mean, I, and I'll say this, probably get a little pushback, but years ago, the focus was on the students, but I think the foundation realized that the focus also needs to be on the faculty because um, we need to get the right people in, in front of those students, um, you know, to help them understand the, the, the workforce and the in industry itself. So I think the foundation has done some great things on that behalf. Um, I think you you didn't mention the awards too, and and those mm -hmm. are some good things. For faculty, the education award, um, yeah. which I was blessed to receive many years ago. Um, you know, all these things help when you're 
uh, when you're coming up as a young faculty member uh, in your tenure and promotion package or your uh, mm-hmm. you know, rising through the ranks, um, the all, all hands student essay competitions, which I know many people are aware of too, uh, all great things to, to help with the promotion of, uh, of higher education. So uh, I commend you all, and, and I'm, I've been enjoying working on this committee for a long time. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, and just to dovetail on uh, Craig's uh, comments about the essay competition as an example, it's the uh, we call it the all hands essay competition, and it's open and available to graduating seniors who are in the construction uh, science major platform, and it comes with a, a stipend that students are able to receive and then they're able to come to where we invite them as our guests to the annual AGC convention. Also, the um, the faculty, um, uh, the Outstanding Faculty uh, Award is, again, uh, an award that we provide, as Craig alluded to, to inspire and encourage faculty members who are teaching those those future students who are coming into the industry, and that comes with a stipend of about five thousand mm-hmm. dollars. And the and then we ask that faculty member to highlight uh, two of his or her students, and we offer them twenty five hundred dollar um, awards as well. So there is some benefit to applying for those particular awards here at the foundation. We look forward to having those awardees, as I mentioned, at our annual convention mm-hmm. every spring, and we get the. Uh, run them around the convention. They get to be highlighted and put up on pedestals and recognized and congratulated. And so we we enjoy the opportunity to highlight what our donors do. And I don't want to uh, 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 lessen the impact what our donors do. Our donors allow us to do the breadth of what we were able to accomplish here at the foundation from funding our scholarship programs to those award programs that I just mentioned. And then we have uh, committee members such as Craig, who do a huge job and a huge lift for us in reviewing applications from our scholarship programs all the way out to our awards programs. And so we appreciate all that they do to help us be effective and efficient in what we're able to do on a daily basis here at the foundation. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pull up the uh, AGC's uh, Education Foundation website here real quick for folks to see. Mm -hmm. Here's the web page. If you want to highlight anything, Daryl, on on Yep. directly there yeah we can certainly do that so on the far right there under uh, apply now our scholarship program our annual scholarship program which i've alluded to is now open our portal opens july 1 every year and closes november 1 and again our scholarship program is directed at students who are studying construction related uh, professions both engineering and construction specific and um, we offer those students a $2,500 scholarship per year. Those are renewable scholarships that we do offer students. So we offer students from sophomore year on. So a student who may come into our portal or our scholarship program as a sophomore has the opportunity to have renewable scholarships valued over at, a, at about $7,500. And again, that also includes students who are graduate students. We have both graduate and undergraduate students who can apply for this particular program. So we encourage students and parents to encourage your students to apply for that scholarship program. We do ask that students who do apply for the program for our scholarships are attending school full-time and are in ABET or ACCE accredited programs. So that's one of our stipulations that we do require for students to be a part of those programs that are accredited by one of those two accrediting bodies. Well, uh, if you could real quick, Daryl, could you step back a bit from the foundation and just uh, mm-hmm. highlight what AGC is for those and how large it is and, you know, maybe about how old it is for those who don't know what AGC stands for? Yeah. So AGC of America is the uh, leading construction association for uh, large and small construction firms across the country and those uh Uh, suppliers who support the industry from Tile and HVAC, all those kinds of of companies are members of AGC. That represents about 24, 25,000 members across the country. And they run the gamut from heavy civil to you name it, pavers. All of those are constitute members of the AGC. And consequently, those members become donors pretty much to the foundation. We're very fortunate that those members see the merit and the benefit of supporting an association's foundation that they get a great deal of work of uh, benefit from. So AGC of America provides um, uh, uh, 
ongoing educational programming for its members. It also provides a legislative um, a lobby for the membership of both nationally and locally at local um, state houses across the country. And I think a lot of members find value in that and support AGC's PAC as a result of that as well. So uh, what, what I've learned since I've been sitting in this seat is that the membership finds great value in what AGC of America provides for them and subsequently is very engaged in a lot of the programming and the activities that AGC of America offers as ancillary services to for their membership. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I know you, you also are AGC as a whole does a lot of, you know, training on, on different uh, topic areas, project management, uh, yep. construction supervision. Um, they always have classes running and, and exactly. uh, again, bettering the industry. So uh, they're uh, a great organization and, and helping helping to do that. So uh, it's, a, it's a good yep. thing. <laughs> And it, as I alluded to, it's been rewarding for me to see the affinity that members mm -hmm. have for AGC of America. Right. And as, as Craig alluded to, the various uh, continuing ed sort of opportunities that come underneath that umbrella. And uh, for that, re and, and because of that, because of what they get from AGC of America, they do see the merit, as I noted, in being supportive of the foundation because the foundation was set up to be supportive of the industry members as well. So it is a circular point. We are a separate 501c3 from AGC of America with a separate operating board, but we are certainly uh, tied at the hip to what AGC of America does. And a lot of our leadership at our board level, AGC's foundation comes off of AGC of America's uh, found, uh, board as well. So we do have a direct tie back into AGC of America. And I actually report to the uh, CEO, Steve Sandher, at AGC of America. So we have a very, very close tie to AGC of America. And they support a lot of our backroom needs from finance to operations to comms and marketing. We get a lot of support. Uh, we're a smaller team there at the foundation, so we get a lot of support directly from AGC of America. And the dues that the members pay certainly benefit us and what we try to get done here at the foundation. Mm -hmm. well, I know the um, AGC headquarters, I've been to it downtown D.C., and there's chapters around the country. Sure. Um, I don't know how many. I can't. I don't, I don't remember the total count, but there's quite a few across all the states that uh, may be close enough to somebody listening that they could mm -hmm. go visit. And I, I believe also uh, that some of the chapters have additional scholarships beyond AGC main foundation as well. Yeah, uh, all um, the vast majority of our local chapters, as you noted, uh, Dr. Sims, are dispersed across the country and do have their own standalone uh, uh, foundations, which do comparable to what we do on a national level. They do it more in their district or their statewide activities. And so they do offer scholarships to grad and undergrad students and provide workforce scholarships to those craft professionals as well. So we are separate and alone from what they do. And it doesn't prohibit students from also having uh, scholarships through us and through their local chapter. So we encourage students and faculty members to be involved in their local AGC chapters and be involved with AGC of America. Mm -hmm. We, um, uh, Capital Tech, just uh, to highlight um, from our perspective, of course, we're trying to support many industry-specific degree programs, mm -hmm. just one that we cover our, our, our only STEM programming, and uh, there's lots of needs out there. So construction has huge employment needs um, across, I mean, everything that we touch, cybersecurity to, you know, mechatronics to facilities mm -hmm. management. So uh, one of the things that we have done here at Capital Tech is we started a, a center for construction excellence, which you can find out about our website. And um, we do offer uh, a bachelor's in construction management on ground and online and, a, and facilities management and safety as well. So um, if you're related anyway to the construction industry, you can take that. We accept apprenticeship credit as elective credit towards our degree programs. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have an online bachelor's degree in professional trades administration that if you have apprenticeship credit, you can transfer in up to 42 hours of elective credit and just finish off your degree that we offer online. So we're supporting the construction and related construction industry support very well. And uh, it's a great career, whether you're in the trades or in you're in the management, 
uh, you can't really beat it for opportunities and and you know well-paying salaries it's a career or a job you're going to have the rest of your life that uh, mm -hmm. takes care of you and your family yeah and uh, uh, in, until I actually came in and sat in the seat, I didn't appreciate the breadth of what the construction industry represents for the GDP here in this country. It's mm -hmm. a huge bond. And, and as alluded to during the uh, COVID, we were considered essential workers. And so work was able to continue in those veins. And AGC of America in its legislative push was able to keep that abreast, uh, aboard and keep it rolling and because members needed to know where they stood. And so AGC of America stood behind them and encouraged them. Um, they have that designation. So that's that breadth of what AGC of America provides for, for industry. Uh, you mentioned those trade professionals. I do want to continue to highlight that we do have trade specific scholarship programs here at AGC's foundation. And those are those professionals who may be going through two year programs as an example. And we do provide scholarships and those are being reviewed. Now on an annual basis, we might award uh, 50 to $60,000 to those individuals at $1,000 a clip. Uh, for those who are seeking some support as they go to particular two-year programs leading to those trades and craft positions. Mm -hmm. to, to follow up a little bit on what uh, Brad was alluding to, uh, mm -hmm. we also have some additional programs, uh, much like the foundation came to the realization that they need to help faculty as well as students. Okay. Uh, we, we have that realization here too. Uh, we just recently had a new degree of Master of Research in Construction uh, Science and Management, uh, mm -hmm. which is primarily geared towards people that might be coming from industry that want to go into academia, but don't have that credential to, to quite do it. Um, okay. It's a research base, so there's no coming to classes. There's just working on developing a thesis and completing it that way. Uh, but one of the more exciting ones that we have, and we've got quite a few students involved with it now, is a PhD in construction science, where that also is a 100% online research degree where you don't have to come to campus. There's no residency requirements. Uh, you work with your chair and or a committee to develop a dissertation. And that has uh, has kind of taken off because there are a number of faculty out there that are, are limited uh, in advancement within the universities because they don't have PhDs. So, yeah. so we, we've seen our, that need and, and we're hoping to continue to develop those. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, the same things that you guys are looking at. We're, <laughs> we're, doing, it, we're doing it too. So. Well, good. Good to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, as far as, as we go uh, from capital tech and our focus is, again, only on STEM-related programming because we're, we're here to support the industry, and that's what we've been around since 1927. The mm -hmm. founder was a Navy vet who wanted to teach people how to build radios, so he founded the university in 1927 in downtown D.C., and then we moved. We're up here in Laurel, Maryland now, which is only about 15 miles north. But sure. we maintain that focus. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, for those who are listening, you know, we're serious. I mean, my background's industrial construction. I have a bachelor's and master's in construction management. Dr. Capano's his background is construction. He And uh, he has his bachelor's, master's, and doctorate in construction management. So we're really here to help support not not just the construction industry, but all the industries, as you can imagine, that have huge market sure. demands. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't think a, a month goes by that I don't get a call from some industry segment saying, can you get me more employees for this market? And I said, my answer is I'd love to, but I need more students coming in to give you more employees because, you know, how do we, how do we work together? And I think, you know, this is where um, we're talking today is, how do we as a university partner more closely with uh, associations such as AGC so mm -hmm. that we have a way to bring in students into these high demand fields that have wow. great careers, right? And and I, I, I'm sure I'm like probably you two sitting here in this room with me is that uh, whenever I decided to go to college, I really didn't have a choice. My, my father said, you need to go to college to get a job. I didn't know any better. 
So I went to college and I went there to get a job and I ended up in construction industry. Loved it. Just accidentally moved on to education. <laughs> and, uh, here I am. And and it is a, it's, it, it's a huge need, too. So those, as Dr. Capano said, those folks who maybe even came up out of the trades, decided to get a degree, they mm -hmm. could be instructors either at an apprentice or in management. It, it, it is a huge industry. And if I remember my statistics right, the construction industry in the United States, States is the largest industry if you take away the government military. So it's huge, yeah. right? You can't outsource the construction of a building overseas for somebody to build it. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. And it is a large driver of the U.S. economy. If we didn't have construction, our economy would fail. And, mm -hmm. and you know, what, what the Education Foundation is doing to help with scholarships across the board from trades to bachelor's, master's, doctoral programs is significant. So what what do you think um, you're looking at for your your next five to 10 years, what's the future of the foundation? Yeah, actually, we're getting ready to do a strategic plan here in the next couple of weeks. So we'll be working with our board to decide, you know, what should our focus be? Do, should we still be focused around research and, and some of the educational programs we do? We certainly do have an affinity around our scholarship programs. We want to be relevant to industry and continue to be relevant to industry. So we're asking those tough questions internally. Of what it looks like and how should we be position ourselves to still be a, a major component of what we what we purport to do. Uh, one thing that I um, we hear from those industry members, those members of, of AGC, this constantly the refrain is we need more more professionals, more skilled persons in our industry, and so our challenge on an annual basis is to help put that pipeline in place to be able to put persons in in alignment to be able to meet that need. And we think we have a cornerstone of what we need to get done, but how do we grow and make it even more robust in the years ahead? And that's part of our um, overall planning process that we'll be going through. Fundraising is always the cornerstone, but how and what should and what markets should we be looking at in order to continue to provide that service back to the industry that says it's so warranted? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dr. Capano, any other questions? Uh -huh. You know, I'm, I'm just looking at some of the ones that we had sent out, but that was the one I was going to ask was uh, wh where do you see the future of, of it? Mm -hmm. And I do know that we're, we're doing uh, a survey came out to, to see, uh, you know, what are some of the thoughts of, of where it goes? Um, right. I, I'm, I'm sure, you know, if the past is any indication of the future, it'll be good things and great things for the industry uh, as a whole. Um, so uh, I think that'll be uh, something to watch and see as we move forward. Um, I do also say, you know, now that I'm a little bit longer in my career, um, <laughs> I enjoy giving back <laughs> and mm -hmm. I would encourage anybody, you know, that has kind of come up through that route and, and done that, uh, you know, to consider giving back at some point. Uh, I know, I know you never turn away any donations or, or anything like that. So I'll put a little plug in for that too. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we certainly do encourage those who have a, an affinity around what we're trying to get done to ensure that industry has the, the pipeline of uh, p potential employees and that research is being done and research that's relevant to what industry says it wants to see done. We want to be able to be that that space and be able to sit in that space and do it with a competency that renders a product that industry really wants and needs. And so mm -hmm. fundraising and supporters and donors help us get there. Mm -hmm. And I have, you know, constant refrain to work when I work with donors talking about, you know, what our objectives are. You know, mm -hmm. And to be a, and we're not a trend, I try not to be a transactional organization. We really want to have an engagement that is a win-win for industry mm -hmm. or that particular donor for what they see as a return for what they're investing with us to do. Mm -hmm. What do you see as far as uh, with we came out of COVID mm -hmm. and that was a tough time probably for everybody. Right. What do you hear, I guess, then from your, your donors, your construction companies, have they are they still, has anything changed differently from after coming out of COVID of what they're looking for? Or is it pretty much the same thing that they are really trying to generate from supporting the foundation? Yeah, and I'm, I'm grateful that I can say um, I get a, a robust response when I have engagement with our membership about what our needs are here at the foundation and how we marry our needs, what their needs are. 
And so our return on the ROI for what a donor does is my is my job to be certainly appreciate what the ROI is and to make it plain for them what the ROI is, is that if you want to see your workforce needs impacted to the point that you have jobs filled, one way to do it is invest with the foundation because we are on the ground with those young men and women who are interested in the industry. And if we can provide them a pathway through to get through to come to your industry, then that means that we've done our job. And so that's where you can help yourself help us. And I use that refrain, the ROI is help us help you. And we see that refrain. I've not seen a, a down tick since the, um, since the uh, COVID uh, uh, pandemic has come around. Because I, and I believe so because the industry didn't shut down like a lot of places around the country and the world did, that they stayed on the grind, so to speak. And they were literally in their offices at times. And so they didn't see any downturn. Our job was to show them that we were still working as profusely as they were to meet their needs. And of course, we don't do it solely by ourselves. It is AGC of America that covers that big umbrella. And we come underneath that umbrella to carry our portion as well. Yes, it's so. I mean, again, I know just from uh, what we see from employers' requests that um, there's no shortage. I mean, there's no shortage of not needing people, <laughs> right? Yes. At the management and trades level, it's a it, it is it is still a huge market, and it's a well-paying career. And uh, those folks um, who want to get into it, there's a lot of different opportunities, different ways that you can move into construction. Um, one thing that um, that we also offer is if you want to be on the IT side, besides being in the management, I mean, mm -hmm. construction companies are they have to they have multiple sites. There's a lot of issues with IT. Uh, you know, there's now we have specialty areas in, in construction cybersecurity. Whenever you're dealing with data transfer across multiple site locations in the home office, or cyber issues you have to worry about. You can have a whole career if you like just in building information modeling for some companies. We also offer uh, unmanned systems. There's uh, large companies in the construction industry now that have their own drone division because you know there's there's savings in having a drone, a small drone doing looking at things or inspections. I mean, I, I think there'll be a time where if your headquarters is in Chicago and you're building in Dubai, you could have an unmanned system flying around for inspections or you're sitting in your office in Chicago. So, so there's a lot of technology involved, not only with that, but with, with printing, 3D printing technology. So if you're in the tech side and you like construction, there's a lot of ways to apply all these technology, IT, cyber sets, and have a career in, in construction as well. So it's not just about building the facilities and being an architect or an engineer aspect. It's, it's everything. And it's and it's global, right? So we know um, that the, it's, it's certainly different for home builders versus if you're building a stadium. There's different techniques and and what you need to know, but they're all different things that are that are interesting. That you may you may want to build hospitals, and certainly if you get in hospital construction, you probably be in the rest of your life because there are a lot of hospitals and you know you need that type of structure, right? So lots of opportunities outside of what I would say the general public probably sees just a, a house being built. Sure. And that's not what the, that's a small segment of the industry and, and seeing folks out there build is a small segment across all segments of industry from highway to industrial, building a big dam, right? All that stuff is, is construction. You can be on the tech side, you can be in the management side, you can be on the, hands-on trade side actually put in place so many opportunities out there mm -hmm. there really are mm -hmm. and uh, when i engage with members and i'm out on the road talking to persons i get that very uh, specific response from them they're looking for uh roles to be filled across the board in their companies not just persons i'll use hanging off the side of a building they're literally looking for all those components mm -hmm. that allow that person to hang off the side of the building so to speak mm -hmm. so it is imperative that holistic perspectives of what this industry can provide from a workforce development is what we take into consideration here at AGC of America as well. Well, Darrell, we're about out of time in our segment, and we certainly appreciate yes. you providing an overview of AGC okay. and the Education Foundation and all the support that you give to those who are interested in coming to the industry. Any last thoughts before we end our segment? 
Well, all, all every opportunity to talk about AGC's foundation, AGC of America, is always a good thing for us because we do find that persons in the industry don't really know who we are at times. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate this opportunity to share. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks for everybody who's watched today. And you can get to AGC through agc.org is their main website. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everyone. All right.